MSM. My name is Sam, and we're gonna get straight to our announcements today because we've got two big events coming up that I do not want you to miss out for, and they both require you to register. So let's get started. Parents' Night Out is gonna be Saturday, February 12th. So that is coming up quick from 4.30 to 7.30, or from four o'clock rather to 7.30 p.m. We are gonna be right here in the students' room and we'll be hanging out, watching a movie. We'll be uh, eating dinner as well. So that's why we need y'all to register for this. We need to get a head count on food. So make sure to register for this. And we'll also be doing a bunch of arts, crafts, and games throughout the night as well. So we wanna make sure that you get the chance to register. Go to cpc.org events. You can also register by going to our Instagram page. If you are on Instagram and clicking the link in our bio, or you can scroll all the way down to the bottom of this video and there should be a link for you there. There is also a link provided in the emails that I send out each week to your parents and it should be at the bottom of that as well. Now that's our first event. What's our second one? That's right, we got another one coming your way. Here it is. Carnival Game Night. We're gonna be hanging out on March 8th from 6.30 to 8 p.m. This is gonna be a combined event with CPC Kids and CPC students. So we're gonna be hanging out with CPC Kids team, fourth through fifth grade, and we are also gonna be hanging out with our MSM crew as well. That's gonna be March 8th. It's gonna be a Tuesday night from 6.30 to 8 p.m. You can register the same exact way that we talked about with our parents night out through the email that I send to your parents through the Instagram link in our bio or at the link below in this video that you're watching right now. Last but not least, let's go ahead and pray before we get into our message today. God, thank you so much for the gift that you've given us with our minds, with our brains. God, we thank you that we get to be with you and we get to love you. It says that we get to worship the Lord our God with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul, and all of our strength. And today, God, we are gonna learn how to worship you with all of our mind. So we ask you to help us be alert, attentive to what you would have to say to us through this morning's message. And we would ask you that we would be open with you as well. We ask you for that and we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. What is up, MSM? It is great to see you. My name is Sam, and we are in week one of our series called Winning the War in Your Mind. We're gonna change our thinking, and that will change our life. We're gonna operate off of the principle that our life is generally moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. And once we think a thought, it gets that much easier to think it again and again and again and again and again and create a pattern in our mind. That's what scripture says and that's what science agrees with. They actually overlap, thank goodness, because they actually overlap quite more than what most would think. Uh, science in the Bible, they're not at odds. They're actually always catching up to one another. So in this uh, week, we are gonna look at how to defeat the lies in our mind. We all have them. And so we're gonna look at the life of Paul. It's in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse three and four that we're gonna start to read scripture and understand how to defeat the lies in our mind. He says this, we are human, but we don't have to wage war as humans do. In other words, we don't have to get down in the mud with others. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning to destroy false arguments, those negative thinking patterns in our mind. What we're gonna be learning today is how we can destroy those false arguments in our mind. Thoughts like for me, I'll tell you all some of the thoughts that I used to think growing up. I don't struggle with these as much as I used to, but here's some that I've overcome mostly in my life. Here we go. For me, those negative thoughts sound a lot like this. It's not gonna work. What's not gonna work? I don't know, what are you working on? That's not gonna work. Uh, this isn't gonna be able to actually happen. Don't get your hopes up. I won't be able to do it anyway, why should I even try? Why would anyone wanna follow me? I'm just not smart enough to do what I need to do. What I do probably won't even matter, so why should I even start? 
I probably won't do it. That's a wild dream that God gave me. I could never accomplish that. Maybe for you, though, it sounds a little bit like this. I'm probably not going to make the team anyway. I probably won't do as good on the test as I want to. So why should I even study? They're already so good at it. I'm never going to be that. So just it's whatever, you know, it is what it is. Maybe for you, you think if I just spoke up about that, no one would understand. No one would understand. No one could love me if they knew what happened. Maybe you think there's just too much pressure at school, at home, in your friendships. Surely I'm going to crack. Those are negative thinking patterns. Those are lies that get inside of our head and start to take us in that direction. Our life is always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. And once we think a thought, it gets that much easier to think it again and again and again. And pretty soon we end up prisoner to those thoughts. And what Paul is saying here is we have the power, not in our own strength, but in God's strength to knock down those strongholds and destroy those negative thinking patterns. And Paul was really immersed in this type of thing. He was famous for kind of saying the, the thing that, that is not always super popular, but he was also famous for saying, the things that I want to do, I don't end up doing them. The things that I don't want to do, those are the things I end up doing. So he is understanding that there's a war in our minds for what we think about and for what we do, and he understands the connection between those two things. Now, even though Paul was famous for saying that, he was also famous for another thing. And that was overseeing the execution of Christians during his earlier days in life. Before he was a Christian, he actually oversaw the execution of Christians. That's how much he hated Christians. Then Jesus gets a hold of his life. God gets a hold of his life, changes his thinking, changes his life, changes his heart, his, who he is, changes his name. He went from Saul to Paul. God renamed him. There was such a seismic, fundamental shift in his life. How cool is that? And sets him up on a different journey. Paul once called himself the chief of sinners. In other words, if there was bad decisions to be made, he's probably made them. Now, why do I tell us all of that? I tell you that to give credit to what we're about to read. He's not somebody that's always been on the right path, thinking the right stuff. He's someone a lot like you and me who's been in those moments where he doesn't want to do the thing that he do, ends up doing, and he wants to do the right thing, but sometimes he doesn't. So let's hear his words on what he has to say. He says this, he's writing to a church at Corinth that he planted, right? So he goes from overseeing the execution of Christians to loving Jesus, following Jesus, and actually setting up churches for Jesus and teaching the way of Jesus. How wild is that? Okay, let's look at it. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 and 4. We're going to look at it in a little different translation. I think it's going to shed some more light for us here. It says this, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. How does the world wage war? You know how they wage war with rumors. Did you see what they were wearing? Did you see those shoes? There was creases in them. What? Lies. Through rumors, through lies, through arguing, through bombs, and through bullets. That's how the world wages war with things like that. We know this to be true as we sit around the lunch table and arguments get started. And then you go, I really want to hurt their feelings. And you don't think that consciously, but that's what you meant to do. Now, before I step on your toes, I'll call me out too. Don't worry. Now, our enemy wants to shape our minds one lie at a time and hold us prisoner of those lies. Lies like you can't trust people. And that's not true. You can't trust everybody, but you can trust some people. You'll never make a difference in life. The lie that you'll never amount to anything. The lie that you'll never be the right weight, the right shape, the right size, the right hair, the right eye color, the right DNA. I'll never be the right fill in the blank. I'll never be able to date the right guy, the right girl. I'll never be able to have the right friend group. I don't know what God is doing, but he's placed me in a weird school. I don't know what's going on, but it's surely a failure. 
those type of lies, those types of negative thinking patterns, generally the ones that we think about when we wake up in the middle of the night or before our head hits the pillow, those are the thoughts, the negative thinking patterns that we can destroy through God's power, not by our own power. So how do we destroy those false arguments? Like I said before, both science and scripture agree that life is always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. This isn't karma. This isn't positivity or manifesting thoughts, right? This isn't like putting positive energy out into the universe. What this is, is it's bringing our mind in, and our body into alignment with the reality and the truth of what God says to be true. That's what this is. Let me give you a little example. Okay, there's a stage here in the MSM room. For those of you who've been in here, you know what it looks like. For those of you who haven't, it's about six inches off the ground. If I were to fall off of that stage, what would happen? I would hit the ground, right? It's not like, I. And in order to do that, I don't have to think gravity, 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 gravity. I don't have, and no matter how many positive thoughts I put out into the world about floatiness, ah, zero gravity, moon, there's no way that I am falling off that stage and suddenly gravity isn't in effect. It's just not gonna happen. So this isn't positivity or mindfulness or karma, thank goodness, because karma says, hey, what you put out into the world, that's what you get back. Positivity says, if you put out the right vibes, you get the right stuff that you want. But if you put out negative vibes, well, then you get negative stuff. So much better to be under and in the family of God because he says, hey, hang on, I've got some truth for you. Come into alignment with it and your life will be moving in that direction. That's God's answer. As opposed to you've got to work really hard and you've got to put out the right thoughts and you've got to put out the right energy. God says, no, just like understand that your life is moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts and I've already called you beautiful. I've already called you family. I've already called you uh, fearfully and wonderfully made. I saw you in your mother's womb. I thought about you before I built the earth. You're here on purpose, with a purpose. I love you. Let's do life together. You start as a family member. You start with blessing. That's wild compared to uh, I have to work really hard to earn the favor of God. That's what every other world religion says. You have to work really hard to earn the good stuff and to earn the right things happening to you. God just says, no, I love you. You're my kid. I'm going to bless you. That's good news. So it's not karma. It's not positivity. It's not manifesting. This is Jesus and us bringing our minds and our body into alignment with the reality of what God says. And when we do that, it's like following gravity. Our bodies, our minds, they have to follow along with it. So when we have those negative thinking patterns and those false thoughts in our mind, which we all do, it's not like the, the bad people think those things and then there's some good people out there that don't think those things. No, this is something that all of us struggle with to one degree or another about one thought or many thoughts or different thoughts. We all are going to have to understand how to do this. So when we start to experience that, what are we going to do? We're going to do a thought audit. So there's a link down below to that, and you can actually do a little thought audit. We're going to think about what we think about. We're going to take an assessment of what we think about, and it's this. You can actually go ahead, pause the video right now, click the link, and take the little assessment for yourself, or you can hang out with me, and we'll kind of do it together. I'll run through it really, really briefly for you. Uh, but this should help us understand our baseline of where we're at and how God wants to impact us and how he wants us to help us uh, change. All right, so thought audit. Are you generally a more worried person? Oh, anything can go wrong. It will go wrong. COVID will probably last a million years. Or are you generally a more peaceful person? I don't know what's going to happen, but God's going to take care of us. Are you a more negative person? <sighs> they probably didn't like me. Or are you a more positive person? Well, if they didn't like me, God's got more friends for me. Are you generally a more selfish person or a selfless person? Selfish, I need to get what's mine. Selfless, I want to give away everything because it's God's and he's taking care of me. Are you generally more discouraged or more encouraged? Discouraged, it's hard. It's probably going to get harder. 
in courage. It might be hard, but God's got my back. And then here's two questions for you that I want you to fill in the blanks for. No one is going to see this but you. You can print it out. Uh, you can just think about those questions. You can open up your phone, make a note on your phone or something like that. The first thought is, or the first question is this. What are the thoughts that you wish you didn't think? What are the thoughts that you wish you didn't think? If you hang in there, I'll tell you mine. What are some, and then the next question is this. What are some possible truths that God has to replace those thoughts? What are some possible truths that God has to replace those thoughts? So as we do that thought audit, and I assume now you've unpaused me and kind of skipped over that if you got to do it yourself, uh, we're going to try to identify those thoughts that we think, that we wish we didn't think. Maybe it's the thought of worthlessness or that we're ugly, we'll never be the right shape, the right size, that we're the victim because we're smart and sure everyone comes around when it's test time, no one comes around when it's friend time, right? Maybe it's the thought that, you know what, if anybody actually knew my life, they would not be my friend. If anyone knew how I felt, they surely wouldn't want to hang out with me. If anyone knew how hard I struggled, they surely wouldn't be friends with me. Maybe it's the idea that, you know what, my parents are having a really hard time. I'm probably really going to have a hard time too. I'm probably going to crack under this pressure as well. So as we move into that, right, as we understand and identify our thoughts and understand that our life is moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts, the next question I want to ask is, are we happy about that? After looking at that thought audit, are we happy about that? Is our life moving in the direction God wants it to move in, or is it moving towards a negative and false thinking pattern? I told you I'd tell you what mine was that I had to overcome. The thought that I wish I didn't think when I was growing up, when I was your age, and when I was a young man, was this. I'm just too dumb. I'm just too dumb. And I know it's kind of crude and it's kind of rude, but that's how I felt when I was growing up. I just thought I wasn't smart enough to do what God wanted me to do, no matter what it was. Yeah, that was how I felt. And it took me a long, 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 long time to finally get to the place where I understood what to do with it. First, I had to understand, okay, that's the thought. I wish I didn't think that because it's not true. It's a lie. And I had to replace it with a truth. That's step two. Identify it, step one. Step two, we're going to replace it with God's truth, what he says about our life. And the antidote to I'm just too dumb is James chapter one, verse five. If anyone lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives it generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. In other words, God loves to give people wisdom. I hung on to that one. I had to. I had to hang on to the fact that I wasn't dumb. I just didn't learn the way everyone learned. And God would be there to provide the wisdom, the knowledge that I need in order to do what I need to do. Every time we think a thought, every time we think a thought, it gets that much easier for us to think. So that's why we're so serious about chasing down those thoughts, understanding them, and then replacing them if they need to be replaced. Maybe you had a frustrating day at school, so you want to go home you want to shut everybody out or you want to yell at somebody and you want to take it out on them. It gets easier to do that every time we do that. So instead, what we get to do is we get to pause. We don't have to fight our battles the way the world fights their battles. We don't have to yell. We don't have to act out. We don't have to shut out. Now, maybe we get to pause before we go in. We get to pray and say, God, help me treat my family with love and respect. Help me be patient with them. And so instead of going in and yelling or shutting them out, we go in and we say, hey, I'm gonna need 10 minutes to myself. I know dinner is on right now, but can I have 10 minutes to just go to my room, please, and pray, and then I'll be right back. Get to redesign that habit. Maybe we feel bad for ourselves, so we reach for all the wrong stuff. Maybe we feel bad about what we look like and so we reach for all the wrong things. We reach for the ice cream. We reach for the cookies. We reach for Netflix. We reach for our phones. We go, ah, it's never going to be what I want it to be. 
Instead, what we can do is we can pause, we can pray, we can walk, we can work out, we can have friends hold us accountable. Maybe we're bored and we're battling negative thoughts about, I don't look the way I want to look. I don't have the friends I want to have. I'm not the funny one or I'm not the smart one. I'm not the athletic one. So we bored, we pick up our phone, we start to scroll through Instagram and boom, there it is. The athlete, the genius, the funny person. And we're like, mm, I'll never be that. Instead of having that thought pattern in your life, what you get to do, because we don't fight the way the world fights, you get to pick up your Bible, you get to pick up your phone, go to your YouVersion app and read scripture with us as an MSM student ministry. That's really cool. We get to replace those unhealthy patterns and unhealthy thinking patterns with healthy patterns. That's how we're going to fight the war in our mind. We're going to identify our thoughts and then we're going to replace them with truth about what God says about us. And we're going to replace them with positive habits in our life as well. Remember, though we live in the world, it says we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not weapons in this world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Power from God. Again, not us putting out positive energy into the world. Power from God, lining up with what he says about our life. Hang on, wait. Sam's not dumb. He gets to ask God for wisdom, and God will provide wisdom. Here's an instance where that actually happened. Because this does no good if it's all out there ethereal and it's all just kind of like theory and it's like running water and smoke right it's like i don't know how to grip it and get it into my everyday life so here's how i got it into my everyday life i was 18 years old i worked at a grocery store uh when i was 18 through about like 24 or something like that uh, i loved it because i got to talk to people all day i was a cashier at a grocery store I was actually really good at it because I got to talk to people and I love that. Uh, and I got to help them with their groceries to the car and like clean the floors and do all sorts of fun stuff. Um, I've got a billion stories when it comes to that. So if you ever want to know what working in a retail environment is like, I'm your guy. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I actually got promoted when I was there and they put me in charge of counting all of the money at night which is ridiculous if you know me. It's the biggest joke that God had played on my life in a long time, right? Because I'm not that great when it comes to counting. I'm just not. It's never going to be in my skill set. I can get pretty good at it, but I'm never going to be great at it. So if you don't think God has a sense of humor, that should convince you that he does. Um, but when I was up there, I had to be trained for the job. I was in charge of counting eh, like all of the money in the store at the end of the night, making sure it was all there kind of a terrifying task. Um, and as I was doing it, my trainer, her name was Katie. She was a really tall lady, frizzy hair. Um, she was a mom of multiple kids. So like she knew how to say no to people, which came in handy. She had a mom voice. So when customers would try to like get something by her, or get something for free or something like that, like she would shut them down in a hurry. Uh, and so like when she would say something, you'd be like, yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah, Katie was awesome. She was like my grocery store, like my work mom, right? She was great. Love Katie. Uh, but one day she was training me on how to count all the money in the store and I dropped dimes. Not like Steph Curry, right? Like I dropped a bunch of dimes on the floor and I remember picking them up and I was feeling so ashamed and embarrassed that I was like struggling to learn how to do this and I dropped money as well. Like, ugh, who does that, right? Lots of people. I just felt really bad about it. And I dropped the dimes, went down to pick them up, and I looked up at her and I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm just so dumb. Negative thinking pattern. False. Not true. It's not true because James 1.5 says that if anybody lacks wisdom, you can ask God. So we're not dumb. So we actually have knowledge. So I'm not what I felt was dumb. That's not true. That's not what God has to say over my life and Katie looked at me as I was like kneeling on the ground picking up dimes and then I stood up she's like hey you're doing really good at this she like furrowed her brow looked down over her glasses pointed her finger at me she's like you're doing really good you need to slow down and understand that this is hard to learn and you're doing it really well so far and you're gonna do great you've got what it takes don't let anybody rush you don't say that about yourself 
And if you have any questions, you come to me and ask. And I was like, uh huh. Yes, ma'am. Like, I felt like I was scolded, but in the best way possible. What was she doing for me? She didn't even know. But what she was doing was taking that negative thinking pattern captive. Boom, you're not going to think that anymore. Why? Because here, you have what it takes. And she was replacing it with what God had said about me and with the truth of who God said I was. I was smart. I was capable. I could do that. I could learn what he wanted me to learn. If I needed something, I could ask. That's the type of thing that we're trying to learn and that we're trying to get at. That when we're in those patterns of negative thinking, I'll never be enough. I'll never be the right size, the right shape. No one could ever love me. If anybody ever understood what had happened, surely they would throw me away. I'll never have the friends that God wants me to have. I'll never have the family God wants me to have. I'll never be uh, the student that I feel I should be. I'll never be the athlete that God wants me to be. I'll never have the peace in relationships that God wants me to have. I'll never have what I need. But we can answer back to those negative thinking patterns. Go, that's not what God says about me. He says, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made that he saw me in my mother's womb before he thought about making the earth. He thought about you. That's awesome. You're here on purpose with a purpose anybody lacks wisdom, you can go to God and ask. He gives generously. As a matter of fact, we don't have to fight wars the way the world does. We get to demolish them with God's truth. We get to bring our minds and our bodies into alignment with it. So what are we going to do? When we have negative thoughts, in the middle of the night, we wake up and we start thinking about all that stuff. When we walk into class and we start thinking, oh no, it's this again. Well, we see that person and our blood starts to boil. What are we going to do? We're going to do a thought audit. We're going to think about what we think about. Next, we're going to replace those thoughts with God's truth. If you don't know God's truth about a certain scenario, that's what small group leaders are for. That's what I'm here for. That's what your leaders are here for. They wake up every day wanting the opportunity to help you understand what God has to say about your life and your scenarios. That's what gets them excited. They would love to be able to help you replace negative thinking patterns with God's thinking patterns. Third, we're going to seek out accountability. I gave Katie the permission to yell at me, not literally, but to kind of like mom me and say, hey, you don't get to talk that way about you. I gave her permission. Hey, if I say stuff like that, don't let me do that because that's not the way I want to live my life. That's not the way I want to think my life because my life is moving in the direction of its strongest thoughts. That's not the way I want to go because that's not true. That's not what God has to say about me. What God has to say about me is that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm intelligent and I'm capable and I can do whatever he would want me to do. So what are we going to do? We're going to do a thought audit. We're going to replace those thoughts with God's truth we're going to seek out accountability. Ask a small group leader to help you. Ask a mom or dad, a coach, a teacher, a parent, a trusted friend who's a Christian. Help me every time I exhibit those symptoms of a negative thought that I don't want to think and that God says is false. Would you help me and remind me that I don't have to fall victim to those thoughts? Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus that we start as your family. When we're in your family, we start as family. We start with your approval. God, thank you that we don't have to wage war like the world does with lies and rumors and negative thinking patterns. But God, we get to wage war against the negative thinking patterns in our life with your truth. What you say about us, that is what is true. God, thank you for giving us the ability to have thoughts and to have thoughts that actually shape our life. God, we would ask you that right now in this moment, you would help us identify those thoughts we wish we didn't think, that you would help us bring your truth to mind and or bring a leader, a person in our life that we can ask to help us hold us accountable. We would ask you for that, and we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. MSM, we are here for you. We love you. We want to be there for you to help you win that war in your mind. We love you. Peace.
I search the world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty praise And treasures that fade Are never enough Then you came along And you put me back together And every desire is now satisfied Here in your love Come on, you sing it God. 